Hey everybody. Is this thing on? All right. It's Emily Parker with Remax Executive and I have a really fun topic for you guys. It is what is going on in real estate because a lot of things have changed. So the reason I wanted to make this video is because there is a lot of information flying around. I know I've personally been updating my social media followers and making sure that everybody in my sphere kind of has an idea of what's going on, but I wanted to throw this out there because you are either a follower on my YouTube, um, social media, or you get my newsletter and you might be scanning the QR code to watch this. So I wanted to make sure that everybody that I come in contact with knows what's happening. So I'm gonna give you a quick history lesson. That way you kind of understand what brought us to the point we're at today. Basically, in another state, sellers were unaware that when they paid the listing agent for selling their house, the listing agent was also sharing a piece of that pie with the buyer's agent. Now, I know that in California, that's the norm, right? For the seller to pay the listing agent and then the listing agent um, takes that commission amount, whatever it is, and shares a percentage or a flat fee, some chunk of that usually goes to the buyer's agent. Now, this has been our norm, but it's never been mandatory. And now that all of this has happened, we are in a situation where we want to make sure that it's very clear to the seller. Even though California had it very clearly stated in their listing agreement, we as realtors are roped into this whole situation. So we are having to pivot. Enough about the history. Now let's talk about what's actually happening now and how it's affecting. We have some changes happening and those changes are all put in place to protect you as the buyer or seller. Now I'm going to preface this next section with saying things are constantly changing right now. We have had a big shift in the real estate industry, what's required in all of this, and I'm about to talk about all of that, but I wanna let you know that the information I'm sharing in this video today, September 4th, um, it could change in a week. So this might be, um, irrelevant soon, but I will let you know if things change. So as a buyer, this is what you need to know. If you want to be represented by an agent, you are going to need to sign an agreement of some sort. Buyer agreements are not new. They've been around. It's the same concept as a listing agreement, right? When you have to sell your house, um, it's the same concept. But the new part of this whole situation is that now it's mandatory for you to sign a buyer agreement before you have an agent represent you. Now in this agreement, uh, you have two different options. You have one that is more of like a dating, let's see if we like each other, kind of like 30 day or up to three houses, you know, addresses written the on it. The like, level is very low. So you have an option to kind of like shop around agents and you, you're not stuck with that one agent. Um, and then the other one is a little bit more serious. It could either be non-exclusive or exclusive, um, but I don't really know why you would sign a non-exclusive, but that's between you and your agent. I'm right now, All I'm signing are exclusive because you know, if you wanna work with me, you're gonna work with me. Um, but the big thing that I wanna point out in these agreements is that it has a commission amount. I don't work for free. So I'm going to put a certain commission amount, whatever amount, that we discuss, I will put in that line, in the blank line. And so it's very clearly stated that if I'm representing you as my buyer, I will be getting paid. Whether it's from the buyer or the seller, that's to be determined. Now there's a box that you can check at the bottom of that document that says, buyer does not have sufficient funds to pay me. So I can sign an agreement with you and if you you know your financial situation. If you know that you are maxed out at just purchasing this property, you cannot pay me a commission. We can check that box. And then you have to be cognizant, aware of the fact that when we write an offer, now we will be adding another line item as part of the negotiations, which will be my concession, my commission, my check. Well, I think a lot of people out there, whether it's the news, media, social media, um, people, right? Um, the buzz out there is that buyers have to pay their buyer agent commission. And that's not necessarily the case. Now we have options. We can either negotiate it as a credit and say, Hey seller, can you give us a 2% or 1% or $10,000, whatever the amount, right? Cause it's not fixed. 
We can ask that seller to give a credit or concessions to the buyer and the buyer can decide, okay, I'm going to take this chunk and I'm just going to pay my agent, right? Like that's an option. Um, I personally would advise against that depending on the situation. I think that um, it gets a little complicated, but that can potentially affect our negotiations later on in the escrow because if you're asking for a credit and you decide to put that to the buyer agent commission, but then there's repairs needed and you need to ask for another credit, then um, you're asking for a bigger chunk of change to go as a credit and your lender might have a maximum, they usually do have a limit on how much of a credit you can get. So I would suggest that if you are writing an offer and asking for the seller to pay your buyer agent, there's a little nifty box that can be checked in the RPA, the Residential Purchase Agreement, where it says that the seller is obligated to pay the buyer's agent concessions and a new form is gonna pop up at the end of your purchase agreement that very clearly states that the buyer's agent is requesting a certain amount of commission from the seller directly. That way it doesn't come off as a credit, it comes off as concessions or commission, however you, whatever word we're supposed to use now because now the words are changing, but you get what I'm saying. That's how I would proceed as a buyer writing an offer right now. Um, but just know that you don't necessarily have to be prepared to pay your buyer's agent. Now, if the seller refuses to pay the buyer's agent, um, either as a credit or as a direct commission, you have the option to move forward without representation. And that's a whole nother discussion. So, um, so far, that hasn't been a situation or an issue yet in my personal experience. Um, and that would be case by case. So you can decide how you're gonna proceed at that point. But that's basically, as a buyer, those are the big changes that are happening for you. Now, sellers, this is actually going to be extremely interesting to see how this all plays out because we used to negotiate as a listing agent, we would negotiate a certain amount and then split that with the buyer's agent. And then it was all up to the listing agent in most situations, it was all up to the listing agent to negotiate their own commission. Sometimes if it was too low for the buyer's agent, they would step in and negotiate that as part of the offer. That happened every once in a while. Now it's happening for every single transaction. So as a seller, I need to advise you, please do not sign anything that clearly states a commission amount. Have a conversation with your listing agent about how much you would be willing to pay, but don't put anything in writing in the listing agreement, which there is really, there's no spot for it, so you can't. But I advise that you don't even write an addendum or anything about the commission amount that you're going to provide the buyer's agent. And I'm, I keep using commission because that's the old word. Again, I think it's supposed to be concessions, but you know what I mean. So all of this being said, sellers, when you are sitting down with your listing agent, you have that conversation about percentage or flat fee for the listing agent. And then if there's a, an unrepresented buyer, what um, that amount might change to, and that's between you and the listing agent. But as far as you paying, potentially paying the buyer's agent, every single offer that comes in is going to have a different amount. And here's a fun fact, buyer's agents cannot be paid more than that amount that they put in the buyer agreement. So if the buyer and the buyer agent negotiated or put down two and a half percent in their buyer agreement, that's the max they can get paid. If they put 2%, if they put $5,000, if they put whatever, whatever number that is, they cannot be paid more. So let's say you as a seller, you had a conversation with the listing agent and you said, you know what? I'm willing to pay 3% to the buyer's agent and then a buyer's agent comes along and they say two and a half percent, well, look at you. You just saved yourself 0.5%. So it's really gonna come down to buyer's agent's ability to negotiate on behalf of themselves. Um, so it could potentially save you money. So this is kind of a cool situation for you guys. Now, all of that being said, I am saying this delicately, but just 
seller, please be aware that in this market, in the Central Valley of California, our buyers are barely pulling this off. We are uh, on the struggle bus between purchase price and interest rate amount. So right now, the buyers I've been working with do not have the funds to pay me a commission. So I just want you to be aware that there are buyers out there who are specifically telling their agents, do not show me a house unless they offer to pay you, the buyer agent, because they can't afford to pay. Um, so that is a situation. Now, I'm personally advising all of my buyers to see everything, and then we are just going to use that. It's just gonna be another negotiation item in the contract. Um, so I'm not, as of right now, avoiding showing houses that aren't offering a concession to the buyer's agent because who knows, that could be all part of negotiation. And at the beginning, you might say no as a seller, but then you might really like this offer and you might pencil it out and realize that it makes sense to pay a concession to the buyer's agent. There's so many situations. So I just wanna let you know that this is what we're seeing now. Again, all of this can change because things are evolving and changing as it all rolls out. We're just gonna see what's gonna happen. Another change that we're seeing is that the buyer agent concession cannot be listed on the MLS. So if the seller is willing to offer concessions, first of all, I would not put an amount. Again, I would not say 3%, 2.5%. I would just say seller willing to offer concession with a, like with a strong offer or with a reasonable offer or something like that. You want to make that clear because if this buyer comes in and lowballs you and then also asks for a concession, that's, you know, you know, but that's between you and the listing agent. Again, I'm not here telling you how to live your life. Um, I am a little bit, but anyways, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, if you would like to discuss all of this further, please let me know, pick up your phone and call me, but just know that yes, there are changes. Everything's going to be fine. It's fine. And thank you for sticking around till the end. I know it was a long video with a lot of information, but I hope it all made sense. And if you have any questions, if you'd like to have a conversation about it, I would love to sit down with you. Um, if you're thinking about buying soon, we can sit down and go over those two different um, agreements and figure out what makes sense for you to sign in the moment. And um, then you can fully understand, because there's a lot more that goes into those documents, but I didn't want to bore you with going over it if you're not actively buying right now or actively selling, but it is good for you to be aware that these are the changes that are here. And if you are a homeowner and you're thinking about selling, I'd love to have a conversation about all of this and how it affects you. I know that I touched on it a lot, but there's probably a little bit more that we can get into um, as far as what to expect, what I'm seeing right now um, as it's all rolled out and everything. So either way, buy, sell, or just want to talk about it. I'm here to help. I'm here to inform and educate and keep you in the loop because real estate is a whole fun, exciting world. And especially with the changes going on, it's really important to stay on top of all of that. And I will keep informing you as changes roll out and keep me in mind if you have any friends or family that are thinking about buying or selling throw them my way i will take care of them and i'll take care of you if you're in the market as well so have a great day are we on hey i have a really fun topic for you to take <laughs> that these are the changes that are coming well they're not coming they're here these are mm -hmm. their seller or their <laughs> continual um okay. so for the buyer agreement Excuse me, pick up your phone and call me.